How are Israelis reacting to the peace plan introduced by the Trump administration? Well, first of all, you were saying Israelis. Remember, it's a very diverse society, so there are some people that are thrilled by it. There are people that are annoyed by it. There are people who are totally ignoring it also. So I can't. I don't think you can say that statement, how Israelis are. It's very mixed. But I don't think anyone believes that it can happen. I think that you'll find is common. That, what do you mean that, that it can't happen? Can't happen. No, definitely not. How come? You know, first of all, peace is made between people and uh, Abbas's government, Fatah, hasn't even gotten into the fray, if you will. So, how's it going to go anywhere if they won't? And they, you know, they really haven't changed the claim that the the goal is all of Israel. So it's it's a non-starter, really. On the Palestinian side, in other words, it's not the Israelis who are stopping it. No, it's definitely not the Israelis. Again, there are Israelis that are against it, Israelis that are for it, and. Uh, but no, the Israelis were, were open at least. I don't think I don't think anyone uh, agreed totally. I mean, it's it's a basis, it's a starting point. But the the Arabs aren't even accepting it. And you know, I, I have to understand this. If we look at the history, they've been offered more in the past and didn't accept. Why should they accept this? It makes sense. Um, what do you think about Americans who think it's a bad plan for Israel? There's a very big difference between. Americans making suggestions what they think uh, is good for Israel or not. Uh, I personally am a little tired of hearing people who do not live in Israel thinking, telling us what's good for us. Uh, the plan, any plan is going to bring about another round of violence and it's our children who have to fight. It's our blood that will be spilled. So I, I, I don't like hear, hearing that personally. I understand, I appreciate, I respect their dedication, their devotion to Israel. I think it's wonderful, but again, this is something for the people who are actually living there, who have to deal with this situation daily. What motivates and inspires the terror attacks and penetrations, infiltrations of the settlement communities? Same thing that's always. Look, you remember a lot of people forget that before 67, before 67, there were terrorist infiltrations and attacks on Israeli communities. And it wasn't the West Bank? And no, this is before. So what, what's changed? Nothing's really changed. Hatred has remained hatred. Uh, the goal has remained the goal for forever, going back even before '67 and before '48. So, what what motivates them? Hatred. And what inspires or incites that hatred? If I was to go today, there's a various social media. The concept still that they want to they want the land. They want to take over the land. Uh, what inspires that hatred? Look, you're talking. That's a history lesson that goes back for a long time. A long time, and it's just something that hasn't changed. What would I like to plug? I, I would like people to continue coming to Israel, and if they haven't to come, I'd like them to go out and see these areas for themselves, boots on the ground, to get a, a good feeling, to meet various Israelis, hear the opinions, and so on, so that this way they can have an informed opinion rather than a manipulated one. How can people find tours that would show them, take them to these kinds of places? Well, One Israel Fund actually has some of the better tours going through Judea and Samaria. Uh, Eve Harrow is in charge of our tourism and puts maybe uh, some of the best tours that you'll find and going to places where most people don't. And uh, it'll probably one of the more, be a, one of the more most educational experiences that they would have by going on these tours.